Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Ohio State University's College of Pharmacy Doctor of Pharmacy Program Overview Presentation. Um, my name is Kristen Torrance, and I am our PharmD admissions recruiter here at the College of Pharmacy at Ohio State. And I am going to be taking you through um, just a brief overview and sharing some information about our PharmD program um, here at Ohio State. So we can go ahead and get started. Um, before we do, um, just want to mention that this overview presentation is aimed towards people who are potentially interested in going to pharmacy school. Um, maybe they're still considering that. Maybe they're in the process of applying. Um, but this program is going to cover um, why pharmacy. Pharmacy is a career. Um, whether or not that's something you'd like to pursue. It's going to talk about our PharmD program here at Ohio State. Um, some of the highlights and perks of our program at Ohio State. Um, and then we're going to talk about our admissions process as well. That will be covered. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about pharmacy as a career, because pharmacy is a very exciting career. Um, so what pharmacists are is they are medication experts. Um, they enhance patient care and they promote wellness. So as a pharmacist, you would prepare and dispense prescriptions. You would ensure medicines and doses of those are correct. You'd be able to prevent harmful drug interactions in your patients. Um, and you'd also have a role in counseling patients just on the safe and appropriate use of those medications. So as a pharmacist, you'd have a unique and specialized expertise just about the composition of those medicines, including their chemical, biological, and physical properties, um, as well as their manufacture and use. So you're gonna learn all of that in pharmacy school when you're becoming a pharmacist. Um, You'll also be able to work alongside other healthcare professionals um, just as a team to treat patients. So a lot of those other healthcare professionals will rely on pharmacists to just select and administer those medications that offer the best results um, and quality of life for those particular patients. Um, so overall, the job market for pharmacists is expected to increase annually at least through 2030. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it is a very exciting career. Um, there's definitely a potential for high earnings. Pharmacist starting salaries um, tend to be at least six figures. Um, and then additionally, you can have a strong work-life balance as a pharmacist. So some of the top reasons that people become a pharmacist is because they're really interested in healthcare. They want to work um, somewhere in healthcare. They really like helping people to get well. They like working directly with patients. They like those patient interactions. Um, if you are um, someone that wants to enjoy a wide variety of career opportunities. So pharmacists aren't just in one setting. They practice in multiple settings, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. Um, but if you want to um, choose from a wide range of where you could possibly work, this could be a career for you. Um, and then additionally, if you want job mobility, stability, flexibility, um, this is a job that can offer you that along with that strong work-life work balance. Um, so some of the things that make a good pharmacist, um, if you are someone with a good memory, if you have attention to detail, if you really enjoy um, scientific knowledge and learning about that, if you are someone that's a lifelong learner, you really like to learn, you don't want that to stop even when you're out of school, um, you might make a great pharmacist. If you have empathy, um, you can put yourself in other people's shoes, understand what they're going through. That's something that also makes a really good pharmacist just when they're treating patients. Um, and if you're altruistic, if you want to help people, if you um, really care to see people's lives changed and improved, um, this would be definitely a fulfilling career for you. Um, skills that make good pharmacists, um, communication skills, working as a team alongside those other healthcare professionals to treat a patient, um, if you've got leadership skills, um, if you are an analytical thinker, counseling skills, again, just when you're counseling patients just on those the medications they're taking, um, trying to educate them as well, just with um, when they should be taking those medications to get the best results, things like that. Um, and if you have great problem solving skills, then this could definitely be a great career for you. So what are some of the things pharmacists can do? So kind of the classic one most people think of is working in community or retail pharmacy. So this would be, you know, at a CVS or at a Walgreens or in a grocery store pharmacy, just kind of behind that counter. Um, so that is certainly a setting that a lot of pharmacists do work in, um, but there's more than just that. Uh, there's also hospital pharmacy. So working um, as part of a big hospital system, 
um, treating patients that are there. Um, you can work in ambulatory care and more private practice settings. You could work in the pharmaceutical industry. So working for pharmaceutical companies, there are positions that you can get into as well with your PharmD degree. Um, you can work for a government agency. So sometimes the FDA um, is something that you can get into. You can work um, medication management and more managed care, um, just trying to educate people on how to take those medications just so they get the best results. Um, and if you're interested in working with specific populations, so maybe with geriatric populations or pediatric populations, um, that's something you would also be able to look into. And again, if you're interested in specific disease states, so um, maybe HIV, maybe treating um, cancer and oncology, those are also um, specialties that you can look into as a pharmacist. All right, so now we're going to switch a little bit um, just to learn more about our Doctor of Pharmacy program here at Ohio State University. Um, so our PharmD program here at OSU is a four-year in-person professional program, um, and it's going to train our students to become the medication expert on the healthcare team um, through our innovative curriculum and access to six other health science colleges on campus, as well as a world-renowned academic medical center, which is just steps away, which we'll talk about more in a later slide. Um, so in our PharmD program here, you have the perks of a large institution like Ohio State, but um, within our College of Pharmacy, you're going to have a close-knit community because we are a smaller college, so you'll get that small college feel within our PharmD program. Um, we are nationally ranked, one of the best 10 pharmacy schools, um, according to the U.S. News and World Report. I believe right now we are number seven. Um, so kind of moving into that, we're going to look at um, the reputation of our program, just some of our key outcomes here. So as you can see up on the screen, the graduation rates um, for those previous five years, um, graduating in four years, so students graduating on time, not taking any extra time, not withdrawing um, as well over 90% for all of those years. Um, and additionally, our licensure exam pass rates, so both the NAPLEX exam and the MPJE exam, um, our students are passing with rates higher than the national averages for all of the accredited pharmacy schools. Um, so that's something we're very proud of. We like to set our students up for success. Um, we've got a lot of resources in place here in our college just to help you guys succeed. Okay, so now we are going to be looking at um, just the curriculum within our PharmD program. Um, so it's something that um, is pretty unique and we're pretty proud of. So right here on the screen is the curriculum for your P1 year. So your first year in pharmacy school. Um, something that's important to note is our curriculum is in a module format. So what that means is that instead of taking four or five classes at once, like you are as an undergraduate student, you're just in one class at once. And that one class is called a module. And it's just a super deep dive into one specific content area. So you can see the first module is called transitions and it's one week long. Um, and you're in that module for a week. And then at the end, um, you've got a reflection day and then you move into the next module, which is two weeks long. And then after that, you graduate out of that one, you move into the next module. So you have these modules, um, there's certain number of weeks long. And then after that, you reflect and then you move into the next one. So it's nice because you're only focused on one um, content area at a time. So you're not pulled in a bunch of different directions. You only have the coursework for that one class. Um, so our students really enjoy that aspect of our program. You'll also see up on our screen here something called Integrated Patient Care Laboratory, IPCAL. That is um, the laboratory component of our curriculum. So students would be in lab sections, um, practicing things such as making compounds, sterile compounding, non-sterile compounding, um, making ointments, things like that. Um, so you would be in lab um, at some of the same time that you would be in the classroom in those modules. And then additionally, you'll see something called a longitudinal IPI, stands for Introductory Pharmacy Practice Experience. That is the experiential component of our program. Um, so we definitely have a big focus on experiential education here at Ohio State. It's one third of our total curriculum and it begins in your P1 year. Um, so you'll have rotations out at pharmacies. So your P1 year, it's gonna be a focus on community pharmacy. So you might be at that CVS, at that Walgreens, just putting into practice what you're learning in the classroom. It's a really great way to just learn some hands-on experience. It often helps students retain information better too when they're actually putting it into use in real life. Um, so it starts your first year um, and you've got that throughout all your four years at pharmacy school, you've got that experiential component. So that's really nice. A lot of other pharmacy schools will kind of start 
that experiential component later in their career in pharmacy school after um, just a couple solid years of classroom work, but we start that in the first year. Okay, so the next slide here is showing, um, just showing us the curriculum for the second, third, and fourth year in pharmacy school. So um, that second and third year look pretty similar to year one. You're in those modules in the red, and then you've still got your lab section. You've still got that IPI rotation. Um, you also become able to take some elective courses, your P2 and P3 year, where students are able to um, just pick electives that really interest them. Um, those can be taken within our college of pharmacy, pharmacy related. They can also be taken at some other colleges at Ohio State. So maybe you're interested in learning a foreign language. You can take those courses and they count for elective credit too. Um, so that's just a unique thing about our program. And then additionally, in the P2 and P3 year, you'll see something called an IPE or interprofessional education. Um, this is really awesome. So as I mentioned earlier, Ohio State has seven health science colleges on campus. So um, dentistry students, optometry students, public health, um, medicine, um, veterinary medicine, as well as um, law students. Yeah, so um, we've got quite a few, um, but you would actually be able to meet with students um, in those other professional um, programs and work through patient cases with them. So you would be learning about um, those other healthcare professions in this IPE course. Um, and then you would also get to work with them, kind of solving a mock patient case. So you would get to learn, you know, what each person on that healthcare team specializes in. You get to um, advocate for pharmacy. Um, so it's a really great way to learn to work together with other healthcare professionals, um, which is what you'd really be doing out in the real world. Um, and then additionally, you'll notice that that P4 year looks much different than um, the first three years of pharmacy school. So this is your API year. So an API rotation or advanced pharmacy practice experience, um, pretty similar to those IPIs. It is just a rotation um, out in a pharmacy setting. So um, what makes APIs different is that they're each going to be four weeks long, 40 hours a week. So it's essentially working full time. Um, you're going to have to be doing nine rotations and each one's gonna be a one month long. So um, nine months out of the 12 month calendar year, you'll be in these rotations. Um, you can kind of pick and choose when you'd like to complete them. You could start in the summer, you could take your summer off, or if you do them in the summer, you can kind of take some of those winter months off. It's really just up to you. Um, but those API rotations are really where you get to take ownership of your career. Um, you're gonna be doing rotations in community pharmacies, hospitals, ambulatory care settings, um, even some other fun ones that you'll be able to um, devise and pick, pick from. So um, a really unique thing about uh, our FarmD program here at Ohio State is we actually have a team of people within the college, our experiential education team, who goes out and finds these rotations for our students. So they'll find your IPI rotations, they'll find your APRI rotations, you're guaranteed to get rotations. So um, the stress of finding these isn't put onto our students. We're actually um, working with students to ensure that they're at a rotation that they like. Um, so that is also another really nice thing. All right. So our PharmD program here at Ohio State is housed within a building called, called Parks Hall. Um, it's right in the heart of Ohio State's campus in Columbus. Um, all of your classes in the PharmD program are actually going to be in one building. Uh, so even though Ohio State, as mentioned earlier, is a very large institution, big campus, College of Pharmacy is small. So it's going to feel more personal and there's going to be a strong sense of community for you here. Um, Parks Hall is a great space. We've got some real nice facilities. We've got an updated student lounge. Um, we're actually finishing up a nice outdoor patio space. Um, it's going to be ready for students to use this August. Um, we've got vending machines. We've got lunch and study spaces. We've got our pharmacy library right here within the building, which is real nice um, that students just have that library space with group study rooms to go to. Even though there are tons of other libraries on Ohio State's campus, we've got one here as well. Um, we've got a nice 40 workstation practice lab, a recent multi-million dollar renovation just where our PharmD students um, have those lab sections. We've got a real nice 150 seat tech enhanced classroom um, where a lot of our PharmD students will spend um, their time in those module sections. 
And then we've also got 11 patient counseling suites within Parks Hall where our PharmD students um, practice patient counseling. Um, so we do have a video tour of the College of Pharmacy up on our website, um, which we'll link you to down below as well. All right, so what is it like to be a student here at Ohio State within our doctor pharmacy program? So something I think that you can expect is you're definitely going to feel and sense a really strong culture of service and of wellness. So Ohio State really cares about well-being of students. That's um, no different within our college here. So we offer a lot of resources just to help our students succeed. Um, we do have a dedicated full-time psychologist within our College of Pharmacy available to meet with any of our students. Um, we have a tutoring services, peer mentoring. So we definitely care not just about your academic well-being, um, but also about your mental and your physical well-being. Um, additionally, that culture of service, um, our PharmD program does require um, students to complete some community health service hours each semester. So you're gonna gain experience um, just out in the community, giving back to our community as well. A lot of our student organizations are service-based like that as well. Um, additionally, we've got a dedicated career services office within our college. So this is just two full-time staff members who are really dedicated to helping our PharmD students succeed. So they offer things like resume reviews, mock interviews. You can come and do those in person. You can do them online. They'll help you with career exploration and assessments. Um, and another nice thing is they regularly provide our students with job and internship listings as well. Um, we have a dedicated diversity, equity, and inclusion office here within the college, just working full time for those efforts. Um, and additionally, we've got over 25 student organizations within the College of Pharmacy just for our PharmD students to join. So some of those organizations are broad. Some of them are a little more niche. So you're definitely going to be able to find something that matches your interests, um, that you're just able to gain some great leadership experience in as well. Okay, and then another notable thing is our proximity to the Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center. So it's literally right across the street from Parks Hall. It's in our backyard. This is a top-ranked academic health center with world-class facilities and practitioners. Um, a lot of our faculty within the college are actually practicing clinicians over at the WEX, so students definitely are able to become familiar um, with contacts over there. A lot of our students are on those IPI or API rotations at the WEX. Many of our students are working at the WEX um, afternoons and weekends just as interns there. Um, so it is really fantastic that we've got this on our campus. A lot of other pharmacy schools are in more remote locations. They're maybe half an hour, an hour away from a big hospital system like this, but this is right here um, in Columbus. So it's definitely something that um, makes our program stand out. Speaking of Columbus, um, Ohio State is located in Columbus, Ohio. So this is where you would be living um, if you chose to attend our PharmD program. So Columbus is a very fast growing city, um, which is great. That means our pharmaceutical industry and our need for pharmacists here is also growing. Um, so there won't be any shortage of jobs. Um, Columbus is a little bit of a bigger city, but it's still got that Midwestern feel. So um, very drivable. It's not as intimidating as Chicago or New York. Traffic's nowhere near as bad, but um, it's definitely an entertain, entertaining city. We've got some great entertainment and dining options. There's some really cute areas here. Um, really good restaurant scene if you're a foodie. We've got a couple malls nearby. We've got a nice outdoor mall called Houston Town Center. Um, if you're into professional sports, we've got professional hockey team, the Columbus Blue Jackets. We've got Columbus Crew professional soccer team. They just built a nice new stadium. Um, so those are some really fun things to do here. We have the Columbus Museum of Art. Um, what's really nice is if you're a student at Ohio State, you can actually get discounted tickets to a lot of those things I just mentioned. Um, professional sports games, art museum, things like that. Um, discounted tickets through our DTIX office here at Ohio State. Um, and additionally, if you're a student at OSU, you'll have free public transportation with your student ID. So our Columbus public transportation system, the bus lines, they go um, all throughout and around the city. Um, and those are free. You just swipe your student ID and you can hop right on. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, it's a drivable city. It's um, completely possible to bring your car here as well. Okay, so now we're switching gears and we're gonna talk about our admissions process here um, for our PharmD program. So um, some of our application requirements is seen on the left. So you're gonna apply through FarmCast, which is just the centralized application service that all pharmacy schools use. 
So um, in order to apply, it's required that you have a minimum 2.7 GPA. So that um, includes just all coursework from all institutions you've attended. So um, if you're an undergraduate student, it's your undergraduate GPA. If you have um, attended a master's program or any other graduate or professional programs, it's going to account for that coursework as well. Um, so we just need a minimum 2.7 to be considered. Um, additionally, you're going to have to write a personal statement that will be included in that FarmCast application. Um, we require that you submit three letters of recommendation. Um, it's definitely preferred if those letters can be written by um, a pharmacist or a science professor. Um, that definitely helps you stand out a bit. Um, but essentially, these really just need to be from someone who knows you well, who's going to be able to write you a good, detailed letter. Um, really, the only thing that we say don't go for is do not ask someone you're related to to write one of these letters. Um, and then students are required to have a completed bachelor's degree by the time they begin the program. So if you're finishing up your bachelor's degree, maybe it's your senior year, you're welcome to apply. Um, as long as that bachelor's degree is going to be finished by the time you would start the program in August. Um, additionally, we just require um, students complete our prerequisite courses, which we're going to look at in one of the next few slides here. Um, but kind of same thing with the bachelor's degree. It's OK if you're in the process of taking those prereqs while you're applying, as long as they are completed by the time you start the program, you're good to go. Um, and then additionally, pharmacy experience is definitely recommended. It helps you stand out, um, but it is not a requirement for admission. Um, and then looking at that admission cycle, so our application cycle is going to open July 14th this year in 2023, and it's going to be open until April 3rd, 2024, so open July through April, um, but we do operate on a rolling admissions basis, so the earlier you apply, the better your chances of securing a seat in the program. Um, we review applications all throughout. As they come in, um, we're inviting people to interviews starting in late September going through April, um, but the earlier you apply, the earlier you interview, the better the chances are of securing a seat. So apply early. Um, and then a program begins each year um, in August. Okay, and then looking here is just to give you a sense of um, uh, just some of the qualities of competitive applicants. So as mentioned earlier, we've got that minimum 2.7 GPA requirement to be considered for admission. Um, the average GPA of our incoming class this year was a 3.35. Um, we definitely recommend that you'd be able to get that GPA at a 3.0 or above. Um, gives you much better chances of admission to a program. Um, additionally, with the science GPA, we do look at the science GPA as separate from the cumulative GPA. Um, so that's just the GPA of all the science courses you've taken. Um, there's no minimum to be considered for admission, um, but the average of our incoming class this year was a 3.2, and we do recommend that would be at a 3.0 or above as well, just because our program is very um, science heavy. Um, and then additionally, the PCAT, um, the Pharmacy College Admissions Test, that is not required. Um, we usually recommend that um, applicants take that just to boost their application if um, their GPAs are low on the lower end and they want to make that application stand out, show they're still competitive. All right, so right here, we're looking at the prerequisites for our PharmD program. Um, so on the left-hand side, we've got just the general description of those prereqs. Um, on the right is the course number um, at Ohio State, which fulfills that requirement. So we're looking for students who've taken an introductory biology course, so at least a class and a lab alongside it. General chemistry one and two with labs, organic chemistry one and two with at least one organic chemistry lab, um, at least one class of calculus, one class of statistics. It can be um, introductory, calc one. It can also be more advanced. Um, we're looking for a basic microbiology with a lab, a biochemistry class, and a human physiology class. Um, so yeah, again, on the right-hand side there, those are the courses that you would take if you were an Ohio State student. Um, if you are not sure if the courses you've taken at a different institution would transfer, there's actually a free website called Transferology, which you would be able to plug in um, these Ohio State course numbers and see what classes at your school um, would, if possible, fulfill the prerequisite requirements. Um, additionally, if you want to check to see if your courses you've taken at a different institution would work, 
you could contact um, us at our admissions email, cop-admissions at osu.edu. All right, so funding your farm D. Um, so we do have financial aid and scholarship opportunities available for our students here. Um, so financial aid is available through filling out that FAFSA form. So um, applying to FAFSA for the upcoming academic year. Um, and then additionally, our scholarship opportunities. Um, we do have quite a few scholarships available for our college pharmacy students. So we have an incoming P1 application. Um, so this is for incoming students who are going to start their first year. If you're in the process of applying, um, that application is going to open July 15th this year, and it's going to be open through February 2nd. So um, again, this is why applying early is important. Um, if you're applying, you know, late March, you might still be considered for admission, but at that point, those scholarship applications have closed. The scholarships have probably already been distributed because we do work to do that promptly. Um, so you might not be receiving a scholarship if you're applying late. So again, applying early definitely gives you just the best chance for that as well. Um, and then another thing we utilize here at Ohio State is a tool called Scholarship Universe. So this is a scholarship matching tool. Um, it's got thousands of scholarships loaded into it, um, both those scholarships in the College of Pharmacy at Ohio State, as well as other Ohio State scholarships that anyone can apply to, as well as some external scholarships that have been vetted by Ohio State, deemed to be legitimate. Um, it'll actually match you with what scholarships you might be eligible for um, just after you answer some questions about yourself. So um, that's really helpful. Um, our scholarships are awarded based on merit and need. So you do have to apply for them, write um, a couple short um, responses to our essay prompts. Um, and then the scholarships are awarded after a student is admitted. So like I mentioned earlier, applying early is best because you do need to be admitted for us to award that scholarship to you. We're not going to award you a scholarship if you haven't interviewed yet. All right. Okay, so that kind of brings us to the end here. Um, so if you have any questions about anything I just went through, you can email our admissions inbox at cop-admissions at osu.edu. It's up there on the screen. Additionally, please feel free to follow us on social media. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, so you can find us um, at those handles up there. But we're really, really excited that you're considering Ohio State. We definitely can't wait to hear more from you and get the ball rolling. So I hope that this information session was helpful. Again, if you've got any other questions, please reach out. Um, but yeah, it was lovely to um, share all of this with you today. And I hope that everyone was able to learn something really helpful about Ohio State.